Hey everybody, Invisible Katana here with my review for episode four of Andor. I totally don't remember the name of it. Probably should have looked that up before I did it, but I don't really have time. And also, it doesn't really matter because this is the beginning of arc number two, The Heist. And I'm excited. I'm already excited. I said it in my last review. I'm going to say it again. I'm probably going to say it for this whole series. I really wish this one, and I think it's just because of the fact that, you know, once it got delayed the way that it did, they're like, all right, we're just doing the first three episodes together. And that just made it even worse where I was like, dang, I really wish they did that for this show. I feel like Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian and stuff, I feel like all of those coming out week to week has been fine where it's like, you know, of course, I want to see what happens next. I wish it came out in chunks, but, you know, week to week, it was fine. Maybe, you know, Book of Boba Fett should have done like a couple episodes at a time because that's much better binging it all at once versus week to week because it did not hold your attention. But Andor does. It definitely does. But it's still just like, man, when you know that it's specifically three at a time and if i'm not mistaken each you know each season is going to be 12 episodes so it's like boom three six nine twelve we have four arcs per season that's great and it's like dang i wish we could just do you know three at a time but of course it's a money-making deal we got 12 weeks worth the tv show well i guess not anymore because they had to <laughs> delay it so we, they got the three but you know nine weeks worth of stuff you still got to keep people going for at least two months you know you got to keep paying that subscription even though i'm sure everyone that's subscribed is well i guess you are doing it month to month point is i wish we still got the threes but one episode at a time it's going to be crazy because i think like everybody they went through this whole thing like oh you know the reason this is going to work is because they can't really get any defense because every i think three years this crazy meteor shower happens where you know a bunch of stars spin around like right above the base and you know it's kind of hard to fly through that it's, it's super dangerous and i was like hmm that's fascinating so one we're going to get to see it. I think everybody knows that. I'm like, all right, let's see. Everybody's hyped already. It's like, let's see it. The way they did a whole story of this amazing moment. It's like, that's going to be sick. Like, everybody's just ready to see it. And two, I think they're going to fly through it. I think their initial plan is going to be, we're going to do this thing and then we're going to leave. But the fact that they reference, like, you know, as it's happening, you know, it's like going, the way they described it was basically like going through a, um, a moving minefield, pretty much. And I was like, hmm, I'm pretty sure the plan didn't involve stealing from the base and then flying through it it was like that's just a distraction we get in and get out and make our escape they can't really call for reinforcements until it's too late and then by that point we're good to go but i'm like i feel like something's gonna happen and then as we're going through it'd be like wow it's amazing look at this thing and before it ends things are gonna get super crazy and it's like oh we need to leave the planet now and we're totally gonna see them do that for sure they're gonna fly through that and escape and it's gonna be wild if not i'm sure it'll still be amazing either way but i'm like hmm I think we're going to see that. So I thought that was fantastic. It was a really interesting starting off point for the second arc with Andor now going as Clem, which was his dad's name. Um, him, you know, starting up with this new group and basically just being kind of passed off to them. And it's like, OK, well, I was told something wrong. You were you, obviously, you know, nobody knew that Andor was going to be joining the team. So it's like you guys didn't know anything. I was told the wrong thing. I was told we're getting like a little payroll Rolodex, like no big deal. And then it's like, oh, we're stealing from the armory. That's very different than what was explained to me. And then, of course, the rest of the team comes in and it's like, well, we don't know this dude. What's it? like we're three days out. We don't know this guy. I thought for sure, though, it was going to get extra crazy when the guy that's, you know, their inside man, when he was coming to the base, I thought he was going to have the information because of how they um, spread that out all over the system. Granted, I guess that was technically just in that system. It wasn't like super crazy far out but you know i i assume that that's what was going to happen and that still could happen that could end up happening you know when they actually go into the base i assume because they were like you know we're going to need an extra set of outfits so it's still possible that they kind of spread that out and it's like okay not only did he escape from there so you know now that that's happened they're going to spread that information further across the galaxy so we might see that play out maybe within this arc or it could kind of pop up uh later in the series which I think kind of leads into the villain side of things where we have, you know, obviously rent a cops, all that. They all got chastised and everything. Guy has to go back home to his mom. But then they kind of pick up like they don't do much with him. He's been embarrassed. He's sent back home. And then they kind of pick up with another character that seems to have kind of the same concept of like, hey, something's happening. We need to do something here. So you have one character who would probably be better served, you know, being within the Empire. And then another character who's already in the Empire. And she's like, hey starting to notice some patterns here this thing that was stolen is you know from my jurisdiction so i have jurisdiction let me check some things out i think that's gonna lead her to the cop that kind of basically got fully embarrassed and i think that's how he's gonna end up with the empire if he doesn't officially join i think he'll at the very least have you know someone on the inside you know, have an inside woman within the empire who's like okay they won't allow me to do this because 
you know, that's she was hired to basically kind of keep things simple. And, you know, a lot of people have mentioned that the specific dialogue from her boss was very interesting. Well, like, that's why we hired people like you. And I was like, OK, I'm not you know, there's so many different ways you could take that, because I'm pretty sure she was the only woman in there. So I was like, was it like a diversity hire thing? Is that what he meant by that? Some people have referenced maybe they mean like for sensitive stuff because of, you know, the gut instinct or whatever. And it's just like, well, what does that mean? What, like, what did he mean by people like you? Because it was just like, the, you know, that was kind of the only thing I could really think of. So I was like, okay, maybe that means something important. Maybe it was just the thing of like, you're basically, you know, you know we're kind of being, you know, it's diverse. You know, you're a woman. Yeah. And, you know, he did say that he liked that she arrested a lot of people. And I was like, huh, allegories, huh? Like, not, not so subtle. But I thought that was pretty funny. It was like, okay, that's interesting. So she seems to be starting on kind of the same path that we had in the first three episodes where it's like this is a character who is not really being listened to by the upper brass but they know something is going on and i i'm pretty sure those two characters are going to end up interacting and depending on how the show ends up playing out either the guy i cannot remember his name for the life of me i'm so bad at names but either that guy is going to end up in the empire or at the very least he'll end up being like the person on the outside who has imperial resources where she can be like all right let me kind of slide you these credits if you need them or slide you this bit of information I can't do it on the books, but I know you want the same thing I want. So now we can kind of team up in this way. So I feel like that's how their characters are going to end up going out. And then it's going to be both of them kind of chasing after Andor since he's technically the one involved in both of the things that they're kind of looking into. She's more in the full Republic thing. But of course, considering that very specific moment was because of Andor, I think that'll kind of lead them both down that path. So I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. I, I enjoyed seeing that. Of course, we got to see Mon Mothma. That was awesome. We got to see just the crazy transformation of a character where he's gruff and he has like the crazy staff, which we haven't seen him use yet, but it's like a collapsible staff and I'm waiting for him to be somebody up with that. But, you know, he has the transformation with the long hair. He does the, the scene where he puts on the wig and stuff and, you know, he does like the fake smile and then he just drops it. And it was just like, Oh, like he's just dead inside. And I was like, well, that's a, that was an interesting little moment, but the um little, you know, the mini rich people museum that he has, I thought was really cool. Tons of references were in there. And of course, they had the Starkiller um, Force Unleashed armor. That was pretty sick. So I was like, that's amazing. He had some Mandalorian armor in there. People mentioned he had um a, both a Sith and a Jedi holocron, which is absolutely insane. And he also had a couple other things. He had some stuff that showed up in Rebels. He had, I forgot what they call it, but like Hera, um, Hera's people, uh, the Twi'leks, they have um very specific things where they pass it down through generations and each generation like adds a piece to basically an art piece i was like okay there's a ton of stuff in there so if you i'm sure you know there's a trillion youtube videos already so look it up there's i'm sure a million other things apparently the world between worlds was referenced which is absolutely insane because this takes place during rebels so that being there was before it was shown off in rebels and it's like hmm. they, you know they might not explore that ever but that's very interesting and it was like okay you know that's not you should watch rebels honestly i say that all the time you should watch Clone Wars and you should definitely watch Rebels. Like they were doing some wild stuff in there where it's like, oh, like Star Wars, Star Wars goes places that is real wild that they, they won't touch on in live action, but they will do it in animated form. And it is crazy. It's so good. So watch Rebels, watch Clone Wars. You won't be disappointed. But I loved all that stuff with them in the museum with Mon Mothma and she's freaking out. It's like every time I go to the bank, it's new people. I have a new driver. I, I don't know this guy. Like I'm being watched like they are rotating people out left and right just to try to catch me slipping one time. And then, of course, it's like, this is dangerous. It's it's scary. It's crazy. But, you know, it's the beginning of the rebellion, you know, their sector of it. And then, of course, she goes home to her husband. And then it's like, oh, man, things kind of suck at home, too. She's dealing with her husband. who He's just like, he seems to be, the, I'm pretty sure he's non-political. I think he's like the classic, like, rich douchebag character, where it's like, I don't give a crap about any of this. I'm rich, and these are my rich, fun friends. And she's like, your rich, fun friends are stopping me from every single thing that I'm trying to do to help people. How about all the horrible stuff they just did? She mentioned a very specific place and like how the people are starving. And it's like, ah, that doesn't sound fun. And so, you know, I want to have lunch over here on the fun side with my fun friends and you can go over there. And she had an amazing line. It was probably my favorite line in the whole episode where she was super pissed. And she was like, if you let me listen, I will. And you will not be happy. And I was like, that's an interesting lie. And it was basically just like, look, this is political warfare. If they say something, getting laughing, they're laughing and drinking, and I hear them say something that I can use against them, you know, in the system, I'm going to do it, and it'll be your fault, and you will be very unhappy that you you don't have any fun friends, you won't have anybody, because people will be like, I can't be around you and your wife, because your wife will use that, you know, in, in court, or, you know, wherever in the system, uh, in the Senate, and so I was like, I thought that was a great line, where she was like, I'm trying to, like, love you, 
but you being a real asshole right now and you're going you're going to f up cuz I'm going to I'm I'm going to attack my enemies if I can't attack them. If I get some information, I'm going to take them down and it'll be your fault. And I thought that was a great line. So she's just suffering. She's struggling to deal with these republics or you know, starting the republic and then is um or there is not the what the heck am I thinking? The rebel, the rebellion. Oh, not the republic, the rebellion. So she's struggling with that. The dude at home is like, I'm just being surrounded. My husband's just bringing in the enemies and stuff. So I'm very excited for where they're headed with it. I thought they did a good job. Uh, both storylines, you know, even though we're we're building up to the heist and we're you know kind of being introduced to Mon Mothma, I think everything they're doing so far has been very entertaining. So I'm looking forward to the next episode. I'm curious if we'll see what actually happens at this dinner, or you know what they're going to do with Mon Mothma. I would assume that that's kind of where the two stories are for now we're going to have Corazon and we're going to have um whatever planet they're whatever planet Andor is actually on as they you know do their heist I forgot what it's called like and Aldani I believe is the name of it so I'm excited to see what they do with that and the villains I'm pretty sure are also on Coruscant I, I would assume I, I think they I think when they first go to Coruscant it's with the Empire it's not actually um with Skarsgård, I cannot remember. I suck at names when it comes to characters. I can remember actor names like crazy. I remember Mon Mothma because like, she's literally been in the original since the original movies. Uh, same actress since Episode Three, which is really cool. So she's been in Episode Three. She was in Rogue One. Um, I feel like they had her in the sequels somewhere, and they gave her some makeup and stuff. I, I think she was. I, I could be wrong about that. Um, but man, like it's it's really cool that they got the same actress and stuff like that. So I think they did a great job with Episode Four. I'm very excited for five and six to kind of wrap up this mini trilogy, I guess is the best way to put it. So I think they did a great job. I love all the, you know, the little references. Of course, you know, Force Unleashed is like, man, just they can make it canon. They would have to tone them down a, quite a bit. I, I was going to say a little bit, but quite a bit. But I know for a fact that there are ways they could do it because it's like it's now it takes place like right now. It's like all you have to do is like just tone it down and you can have all this stuff in like Force Unleashed one could happen like right now in its own little sector of the galaxy. Then some things happen where the characters kind of split up and Vader is not with his young dark apprentice and he's doing something else that is like right in this very specific time span. And it could totally fit. Whoops. It could totally fit within the span of what they do in the game because it's already kind of set up like when we saw in canon, at least Vader kind of does a very specific thing. Just saying you should watch some stuff, but he does. He goes off and does a thing somewhere else. And it's like, you know, there's some space in between where Starkiller is by himself. And it's like, you know, the path is right there. They could basically use the story of the games and just kind of move a little bit of stuff around. They don't even have to do much. Just like tone the powers down. And that's really it. I'm, I'm just saying they could put them in there. And I honestly feel like it would be super easy to put Starkiller back in. They just tone them down. They don't even have to really tone them down because he could be on his own part of the galaxy. And then they, you know, obviously it would have to figure something out as far as we didn't get a Force Unleashed 3 where they literally had Darth Vader arrested. So you know maybe tone them down because i don't know how you even get to that point and then go from there and who knows but you know they could put them in there even if they tone them down like they wouldn't have to do it too much and they could totally fit it in that's just my personal opinion they like it's literally we're in the time they already have they have outs like it's already in there i'm just saying but love the episode very excited for episodes five and six we'll love to know what you guys thought about this one so please put your comments down in the comment section below let me know your favorite parts about it at least favorite parts about it of course what do you guys think is going to happen in the next episode? Who are we going to be seeing? Are we going to get introduced to new characters? We know that we're going to have Saw Gerrera at some point. Um, there's a lot of potential for other characters to come in. Mon Mothman references trying to bring someone else in. Odds are that's Bell Organa, I would assume. So you know, it's possible they could also do, technically, they could do Leia and they would just be an older version of Leia. I think she would... I forget... I think they're only like 16 in the movie. So technically she'd only be like 10 or 11 years old. So I doubt they would do that. I would assume it would be, you know, her dad coming into it, but I'm sure we're going to get some more people that we know from star Wars. So we're probably going to see bell Organa, I would imagine, but either way, I'm very excited. But like I said, we'll love to know what you guys are looking forward to and what you expect to have come out of the next couple episodes for this mini arc. What do you guys think the heist is going to be at this point? Like, how is it going to play out? Who lives, who dies? Cause not everybody's making it. That's, that's kind of the point of this show. Like, People are not going to make it like I think every single arc we're going to be like, oh, you're not going to be in the next three episodes. So you know, we'll see what happens. But like I said, we'd love to know what you guys think. So please put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, thanks for watching.